Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I'm interviewing Liz Hunt about the skills that you can develop to make a sustainable impact. This episode will focus on how you can use the skills that have already been discussed in the series for future good. We are going to discuss what sustainability is, how it relates to the majority of careers, including yours, and how you can get involved in making sustainable change whilst at the university. Okay then, so hello Liz and welcome to the podcast. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself today for the listeners? Hi, yeah, thank you very much for um, letting me talk today. Um, my name is Liz Hunt and I'm the Environment and Sustainability Manager within the Estates team at the university. So my role kind of covers all aspects of sustainability, trying to make the university estate more environmentally friendly and sustainable. So it can cover anything from biodiversity, recycling, um, reducing our carbon footprint to even sustainable procurement. So it's quite broad. Mm. Well, thank you very much for being willing to be interviewed um, and coming to talk and share your insight about sustainability and how students can get involved in developing their skills for a sustainable future. Um, so the first thing in this episode, and I think about sustainability is, it's a very broad term and often it's hard to know what that means from a student's point of view. So would you be able to just explain what sustainability is, as if you explain to someone who hasn't heard the term before? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good question to start with because you're right, it is such a broad topic that can mean lots of different things to different people. Generally speaking, sustainability is all about ensuring that our current activities don't compromise the needs of future generations. Um, so when I think about this, one of the most obvious uh, examples I think there is that that kind of demonstrates it quite well is when you think about the current climate emergency we're in, mm -hmm. it's the activities of humans over recent years that's affecting our climate and causing irreversible damage, essentially. So in order to live in a sustainable world, we need to ensure that we take action now to prevent damage for future generations. So other examples might be things like making sure that we don't use up all our finite resources or um, like causing the extinction of many species so that in the future we live in a world with reduced biodiversity. So living sustainably essentially just means that we are conscious of our actions today and how they can impact us and have a knock-on impact into the future. So yeah, today we're going to talk all about how students can develop those skills so that they can have an impact on helping the world for the future. So you mentioned just that sustainability relates to the climate emergency. Does it just relate to the environment or is it more broad than that? Yeah, typically when people think about sustainability, they do tend to automatically think about environmental issues such as climate change or waste or deforestation. And obviously those are all extremely important issues. But you're, you're right in that sustainability is much wider than just environmental considerations. So many definitions of sustainability actually talk about there being three pillars, one of which is environmental protection. But the other two pillars are economic viability and social equality. So if you think about the original definition that I mentioned, um, about ensuring our current activities don't compromise the needs of future generations. Well, that can't just relate to the environment. Um, future generations will also need a viable economy and they'll need a healthy society as well. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a student then, how does sustainability affect me if I'm not studying things that are directly relevant to sustainability? Um, so it can impact any student at all, really, because um, it's such a broad topic and covers so many different areas. 
that um, the things that you learn on your course or what you do in your personal life, it all kind of interacts with sustainability in some kind of way. Um, and this could be around social issues, um, not just environmental issues. So it could be around equality or poverty or um, health and well-being. But it also is relevant to um, the economy as well. So it might be that um, if you're wanting to work for a business in the future, then having a sustainable business is obviously extremely important. Mm. We were talking in the Enterprise episode earlier in the series about how having aspects that are positive in the public image can help set your business apart. And so being sustainable is one of those things, but I think it's an area that probably will be increasing in the future. So is it right to say that almost all careers are impacted by sustainability? Yeah, I mean, in in my opinion, I feel like the majority of careers can have an impact on sustainability um, and they can they can make a positive impact but they can also be impacted by it as well so as sustainability becomes more important to organizations and businesses they will start to for example expect graduates that they're employing to have a good understanding in this area and to make a positive contribution to sustainability in their careers So many employers will actually be looking to their graduates to provide those fresh ideas and to have that up to date knowledge as seeing as they're straight out of university. And I'm not just thinking about careers specifically related to sustainability. I'm thinking about almost any job. Um, For example, if you're a medical professional, you're going to be interested in promoting good health and well-being. If you're a teacher, you might want to pass on your knowledge about sustainability to the children you teach. Or if even if you're an artist, you might want to use the opportunity to raise important issues about sustainability through your art. So I think it really does kind of cross all kind of sectors. Mm. Um, and it is an important issue that all businesses and organisations are having to face now. Um, and having to kind of step up and and make the right decisions now. Well, I was definitely surprised when I was studying my law degree. There was a module in my third year that was all about sustainable trade and putting sustainability clauses in. And when those clauses didn't relate to the environment, I was a bit surprised by that. So they they revolved around poverty and making sure that the people who worked on the goods that we were trading and writing contracts for were working in the right conditions. And I was very surprised when I found out that that came under the umbrella of sustainability yeah it's something that a lot of people don't realize and i think it's really important there might be people out there that have uh particular interests in um you know social equity or um something along those lines um and they might not be as interested in the environment and they might not realize that actually what they're passionate about and what they're interested in is related to sustainability so I think it's important to kind of get that message out there that it is very broad and it's kind of almost like something for everyone in there. Um, I actually, when you think about um, businesses of trying to be sustainable, I think that's quite a good way of thinking about the three different pillars that I talked about um, because they're obviously going to be a sustainable business. You're, you're going to need to manage your impact on the environment. But you still need to balance that against the costs for the business. So if an environmental activity is far too costly, then it's not going to be sustainable for the business to do it. They might not survive. if They have to pay that much money to to put something in place. So therefore, it's not sustainable, even though you're doing something for the environment. So I think that's quite a good way of looking at it and how it can kind of um yeah, it, it can, sustainability is influenced by all those three points. So it's a lot about balance then. So trying to balance a lot of things now so that in the future we still have things to exist. So we need to make sure there are still businesses in the future and jobs, but we also need to ensure there's the environment to jobs to be able to be worked in. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really it. That, that's definitely it. And different people will have different areas of interest that they're partic- that they're particularly passionate about and that's fine but i think it's important to kind of 
be aware of all the different areas and how they're kind of interlinked together and you can't just progress one without considering the others. So in terms of the different sustainability areas and impacts then, how do people know what the different areas include in sustainability are? Well, one thing you could look at to help in this area is the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. They're basically 17 goals set up by the United Nations, which demonstrate really nicely the breadth of sustainability. And they kind of show that it's not just about um, the environment. There's lots of goals in there about um, society and um, the economy as well. And so I definitely recommend reading up um, more about them. So, for example, there's goals around environment, but things like um, climate action and life on land, responsible consumption. There's also um, goals such as um, decent work and economic growth and things like um, social issues such as gender equality, poverty, good health and well-being. Um, so those kind of frame it quite nicely. So I think they're a really good starting point. So they're definitely very broad then. So that's a good way to know about all the different things to consider then. Yeah. So as a student, how can I help towards making impacts towards the sustainable development goals? Yeah, so the sustainable development goals, they're sometimes referred to as the SDGs for short because it can be a bit of a mouthful. Um, but yeah, they, they can seem quite overwhelming goals. Um, you know, a lot of the issues don't don't sound like they're anything to do with the individual. Um, but how, they are ultimately the responsible responsibility of everyone. And so it's important for people to understand that they can actually have an impact on them themselves. And um, so, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of things that you could do either within your personal life or within your, your future career, potentially. Um, it's about seeking out opportunities where you can make a difference. Um, and if you find it a bit overwhelming, you can have a think about which of the goals are the ones that are the most important to you. There might be ones that you kind of connect with most and that you're most interested in. And think about the actions that you can take to make a difference to those ones. And it could just be things that you do in your home. It could be in your local community or your future workplace. But it could be on a much wider scale if you're really ambitious. But I think I would suggest starting small and then kind of growing confidence. So it could be things such as just fundraising for a charity that you think is important or volunteering in your local community, or trying to reduce your own personal carbon footprint, or kind of going out and campaigning or trying to lobby the university to do certain things. Um, so, so yeah, there are lots of little things that you can do that all make um, a difference to, to the goals. That's really interesting because it's very easy to think that sustainability is just the job of the big companies, the big corporations who make the big impact to the environment. Some people may think that, well, it's their responsibility and their role. So why should I or anyone listening to this put effort into making changes when ultimately others could make small effort and make much bigger changes? Yeah. I, I definitely get what you mean. And obviously big organizations and governments and they have a huge part to play on in this. Um, but actually it's funny. One of the debates that we had in during Green Week, Go Green Week a few weeks ago was about whether individuals or organizations can have more of an impact. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, a really great point was made by someone that ultimately our businesses and our organizations and everything, they are made up of individuals themselves. So whether you're an employer or an employee or a consumer of a product, we all have choices that we can make and we can try to make that difference through those choices that we make. Um, and ultimately, big organizations aren't going to necessarily make those changes unless um people kind of vote with their voice or campaign um, against certain things. So, 
for example, I mean, as a university, the student voice is extremely powerful and students themselves might feel like there's not really much that they can do, but their voice is very, very powerful. And, and if the students are wanting something, then the university is going to listen. So that's just kind of one example of how you can have an impact. But that kind of goes on throughout your careers and lives. Um, when you're an employee, for example, in a business, you can campaign for certain things. Um, you can try and make your voice heard. I think um, although there's a lot that government can do, like as a kind of top down approach with kind of legislation, legislation, et cetera, um, and policies, there's still I think there's still definitely a big role to play for us as kind of consumers and employees and citizens to kind of demand certain things. Yeah, it's really interesting, actually, if you think about it from that perspective. An organisation is only as powerful as the consumers and their own need for sustainability in terms of economic sustainability. They need to make sure consumers want their products. And if consumers are vocal about not liking something, then I guess they probably can be persuaded. Um, an example is McDonald's with their paper straws, and then that changed a lot of people. All of a sudden, people stopped wanting to use plastic straws because of the reaction of individuals towards them. So yeah, it's definitely so it definitely feels like there is actually scope for individuals to have an impact. So if students want to have an impact, then what sort of skills should they start developing to have an impact? Or to try and make an impact? There's quite a lot of different skills actually kind of that relate to sustainability that I think students would find um, really useful to have in kind of future careers. Um, so for example one of the key skills that I certainly found that I've needed during my career is around collaboration and mm. um, so making sure that you're speaking to the right people, collaborating across many different disciplines um, so from from my point of view, I, I work within estates, but within the university, but many of the projects that I work on involve a variety of people across the university, as well as sometimes outside the university, who all have different experiences, different skill sets to bring to each project. So it's really important not to kind of work in silos and, and to make sure you are collaborating Um and in relation to that, another one I would say would be um, around building a good network um, wherever you end up working. Um, and this can in turn help with collaboration. So if you have a really good network of contacts and strong relationships with these people, it will help you to work with them as and when the time comes. And it's also good to kind of learn from them and share good practice. So in relation to building that network and then learning to collaborate with others, do you have any advice for how students could develop their skills in this? Yeah, I mean, you can start to to build um, your network um, as, soon, as soon as you like, really. I mean, just as simple as things like having a LinkedIn account and kind of building it that way. But also um, it's about getting involved with lots of kind of extracurricular things. You're going to meet lots of different people from different walks of life. Um, if you're the more kind of activities and things that you're involved in. Um, so that can kind of help build your network as well. Um, and then when you're going into a new workplace, um, it's the, the more people you speak to, the more people you get to know outside and inside the organization, um, the kind of the, the better any kind of projects you want to put forward are going to be because you can kind of use and the experience of other people, especially when you're just starting out. Um, I think that's that's definitely, it's really good to kind of build on other people's knowledge base. Yeah, both really good pieces of advice. There's no need to reinvent the wheel if other people have knowledge. And that's actually links to the sharing of knowledge, um, sustainable development goal that you mentioned earlier to an extent. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about collaboration then as a skill so sometimes you might collaborate with people who are very like-minded and want to make the impact you want to make but do you ever face times when you try to work with people especially when acting for sustainability that aren't as willing to collaborate or don't go eye to eye with what you want yeah so I think um that kind of links to um other skills around um what I would call influencing um 
because you're right, especially with with a topic such as sustainability, but I'm sure you'd encounter it this with many different areas. Like not everyone is going to be on the same page as you, and that that is quite common. So sometimes you you it's about trying to influence other people. And this could be anyone from other colleagues or senior managers or like even just friends and family in your in your personal life. But you can kind of help yourself to do this by arming yourself with the right knowledge, doing your research on a topic, making sure you understand what is driving that that person or people. Um, so that kind of helps you to influence them because if you know what's driving them, then you can kind of structure your argument, um, if you if you want to call it that, like around their drivers. So that also links to something which I learned in negotiation, almost trying to learn what people's why is. And that is, as you said, their driver. So if you try to work out why they do what they do or what it is that they want and why they want it, you yeah. can start then looking at solutions that fit both sides. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it, because sometimes it's very easy to just kind of assume everyone thinks like you and that if you present the argument in the way that you um, see it, then everyone else is going to automatically agree. Um, But that's not always the case. And sometimes you do have to make kind of cases. It might be like a business case or something like that to win over um, other people. And, yeah, you need to understand what it is that they will want from this they might not be as interested in protecting the environment. They might want to know um, how, like directly, how is it going to benefit them financially, for example, um, or how is it going to benefit the customers or something along those lines. So it's about understanding what they're interested in and kind of kind of aiming the discussion around that. And also, I guess, following on from that, if you get rejected for something, trying to know what the reason why is can really help so let's say for example with sustainability adding something for sustainability might cost money and they may not be wanting to do that because of budget concerns at the moment but if you can explain actually how it might make the money or save the money in the long run that might influence them to make that decision yeah definitely um yeah it's all it's it's always good to kind of look at the whole life cycle of a project and what the benefit there might be like an upfront cost but there might be lots of benefits down the line that you have to demonstrate so a lot of that links to the skills of being enterprising and almost problem solving as well which you've got two episodes on those skills so are there any other skills that you would recommend students start developing if they want to make an impact towards a sustainable future yeah, well, it, you mentioned problem solving there, and that's absolutely essential when it comes to sustainability issues. Sustainability, I, th- I think, as we've already kind of touched on, it's a very complicated topic, and there isn't always a simple solution, um, especially as we've mentioned, if you're weighing up like the costs of something against a positive impact that it might have. So it involves a bit of creativity and confidence as well to think about what different solutions there are. Um, that it's very valuable skill to have. Yeah, I, I agree. It's probably one of the most important skills that's very, very applicable as problem solving and often underrated as well. Um, before I move on to the next section, are there any other skills that you'd like to mention or highlight? Just the... Um... I think it's important to be able to think strategically and to be able to look into the long term if you want to have an impact on sustainability and um, understanding the bigger picture and thinking about where an organization wants to go over the coming years. How does sustainability fit into that? What should the priorities be? Sometimes it's quite easy to get very wrapped up in lots of small little issues And all of them obviously are still important. But if you want to have a big impact, then you you need to understand what is going to have the biggest impact and what your energy should be focused on and kind of fitting that into the wider um, strategy of the organization that you work for. And so you can kind of focus it within the right areas. Yeah, I think that's a hugely important skill. I'm just thinking about it now in terms of if I was to 
suggest a solution which would work for three years, well, that will then have to be rethought and might cost more money in the future if the entire way that the world thinks is going to be different in that time. So um, long term, the rules and the way that we're told to act about sustainability will probably change. I've heard dates about 2050, 2040 and 2030 come into mind. So in terms of the strategic thinking, is it worth thinking about what the world will be like then when you're going to think about what the solutions are that you do today? Yes, definitely. And I think what comes into that is kind of considering the whole life cycle of anything, whether it's like technology that you're putting in place or something that you're procuring or a building that you're building. Like all those things have um, potentially have a, a long lifespan. Um, and so you need to think about what well, if they're going to exist in however many years time what kind of world are we going to be living in then will they be able to adapt to the changes that that we're going to be facing whether that's changes to our climate for example like climate mitigation measures perhaps um but it could be all sorts of other um factors that you have to consider so it is very complicated and it is very difficult um and um and we we definitely haven't got it right but you see like people making these kind of errors quite um, frequently making decisions about something that seems good at the time but then actually a few years down the line you're having to replace it and that's probably costing us more in carbon or an environmental impact um, than it saved so it is about having that kind of taking that looking at the bigger picture and making sure that things aren't kind of decided really like rash decisions but they are well thought through and you do consider the whole kind of life cycle impact of things that you're putting in place and what where's that going to end what's going to happen at the end of that lifespan as well so students should think strategically and they should think long term and try to make decisions accordingly um and that will then be a skill if they develop that that will put them in good stead if they uh, get into employment yeah definitely i think so okay so we've talked about some skills that will help towards making a sustainable future now i'd like to talk a bit more about some barriers and potentially how they could be overcome so are there any barriers that individuals might find when they are starting to develop sustainable thinking I think sometimes people can have a bit of a lack of confidence when talking about sustainability and understanding it because it is such a kind of complicated topic. But the truth is that no one has all the answers and we all have to be open to continually learning more about the topic. And one way of kind of keeping up to date with with things is just kind of reading relevant news stories, recent articles about particular issues that you're interested in. And to be honest, that's one of the best ways to build up your knowledge. You're not going to learn, even if you did like a sustainability course at university, for example, you're not going to learn it all within that course. You learn it all like as you go through life and just um, from what you read and what you're interested in. Um, so I think it's important to kind of build up that knowledge that way. Um, and you can also do it by having kind of regular discussions with friends and families and colleagues about it, because it's it's a topic that everyone, well, a lot of people have an interest in, in and everyone kind of understands to some extent. So um, it's I feel like although it seems quite complicated, it is quite huge. At the same time, I feel like I'm not an I'm personally not an expert in it at all. And people that I talk to who are passionate about the subject and might not have a career in it, but are just really interested in it. They might know a lot more than me about a specific topic just because they happen to have read up a lot about it and have an interest in that. So I think you can you can just learn a lot from kind of reading into things that you're interested in. Um, And also you can you can learn a great deal from kind of listening to what other people's viewpoint points are and having discussions with them. Hmm. It links a lot to um, something I discussed earlier in the series about having a growth mindset and not being fixed on the idea that you don't know much about it now and then you never can. Um, you can learn about it. You can start, even if you don't think you know much about it, you can start developing that knowledge, can't you? 
Yes, definitely. And a lot of people I talk to, whether it's students or colleagues or um, even friends, they kind of automatically start a conversation saying, oh, well, I don't really know. I'm not really an expert. I don't really know much about it. And they go on and they, they talk like they know more about it than I do. And so you think, well, you, you don't put yourself down. Like I don't, I don't have some magical, like, you know, want of knowledge like that, that you don't have. Um, I've probably just read about the same things that you have. So, um, yeah, it's all about just kind of picking up information where you can from different articles and things and, and building on it. You definitely don't need to be an expert to make an impact, do you? No, no, definitely not. I mean, you can you can see that with um, lots of different people I know and I meet um, on a regular basis who are having really good impacts um, and they can be all sorts of different backgrounds. I was thinking about this when um, I was talking to my partner about sustainability and she's done a sustainability related degree and I haven't and I thought, well, how can I help? And actually, you might have different skills by doing a non-sustainability related degree you might have different skills you might not have the knowledge but you might have different skills that can help you to impact towards a sustainable future would you agree with that yeah definitely because you, you might be you might do a sustainability degree but actually what about the kind of for example the engineers that um need all the engineering knowledge but um also need kind of stay to think about it in a sustainable way or um it, the future teachers or um, anything like that it's it you can touch on sustainability in so many different courses um, and it allows you to think about it in a different way and have kind of knowledge from different areas that um, someone who's just purely studied sustainability might not have that extra background in a particular um, topic so it kind of allows you to specialize a bit in in your area and kind of see how sustainability fits into your specific area. Yeah, it definitely feels to me like it applies to everyone. So, for example, with me, I can use my skills in negotiation and law to help with other people who may not have those skills but have the knowledge. So if I team up with them, I can help them overcome their barriers that they might have. Yeah, exactly. And that, again, kind of relates back to collaboration and working together and, and using your different skill sets to complement each other. So we talked about the barrier of confidence. We've talked about the barrier of not having the knowledge of sustainability. Are there any other barriers to sustainable thinking for individuals? Well, one barrier that some um, people might find they have, especially students who um, might have kind of uh, small budgets to contend with, is they might feel like they're unable to kind of live the most sustainable life that they can because um, they might see it as being too expensive or they can't afford it. They can't afford to make the sustainable choices. But I would say that there are, depending on what it is that you're thinking about, there are lots of opportunities to kind of actually save money by being sustainable. So uh, one example of this is like um, if you see a lot of um, people that do kind of clothes swapping or like go to uh, set up swap shops. Um, so you're actually kind of sharing items and reusing them and kind of reducing the amount that's going to waste. Um, once you're kind of living in housing where you have to pay for your energy bills and things like that, obviously being kind of as an, an energy efficient as possible is going to save you money in that sense and that's kind of a good skill to take on into the future so sometimes you might find that if you're in the shop site the sustainable option is more expensive but also I think again it comes back to the life cycle point a bit because you might find that things that are that are probably less sustainable and cheaper they might not last as long potentially so you might have to buy more of them um so it's always worth thinking about that when you're making any any decisions definitely and i think what just surprised me about what you said then is when i was thinking about this question about this barrier i was thinking well yeah as a student at the shop the sustainable, the sustainable brand or the for example if i buy chocolate which isn't necessarily a necessity um the sustainable fair trade brand might be three pounds and the non-fair trade one might be a pound for the same amount but actually 
that's just one aspect of it. Sustainability being as broad as it is, as we were talking about earlier, you could save money elsewhere. So actually, I think there are loads of impacts you can make on a budget, aren't there? Yeah, I think I think there are. There, there's there's lots of opportunities that you can. It, it's it's not just all about the kind of expensive items that are that are branded up as sustainable, um, or ethical. Um, there are other kind of options out there. Um, but and you can potentially save money in e- certain areas, and then you could you might choose that. If there's something that you're particularly passionate about, for example, fair trade, that's a good example. You might choose that actually I'm going to spend that little bit more on fair trade because I've saved money um, by not actually buying any new clothes for ages because I've been buying like secondhand or swapping with friends, etc. Yeah, definitely. Another way that I've just come to my mind that you can be sustainable is by not getting rid of things that you've bought on a budget. So, for example, I... Um, I bought a two pound clock when I started off at university, which I was very embarrassed when I bought it because it was a two pound plastic clock that didn't look great. But actually, that clock I used uh, for four and a half years, and then when I finished using it, I gave it to my sister to use it when she started university. So rather than buying a new clock, I've reused that resource. So although I did bought probably not the most eco friendly clock, it's made out of plastic, but actually, instead of buying a new clock that's more eco friendly. I've just reused that clock and allowed it to make the most use out of it as possible, which is in one way sustainable um, by making sure you get the maximum use out of the things that you have. Yeah, that that's a perfect example. And I'm sure there'll be lots of people get tempted into buying a new, more modern version of something or, um, you know, there, there might be pressure to kind of, there's a lot of pressure around consumerism, but actually, um you can save a huge amount of money by actually thinking, do I really need it? Um, can this be re- reused in some other way potentially? Um, so yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. And another way to come, overcome the barrier of doing sustainability on a budget. Yeah, definitely. So if I'm a student at the University of Derby right now, how can I get involved in sustainability before I go into a career? Um, well, there could potentially be lots of different opportunities. I would advise if, if there's something in particular that you um, are interested in and um, with regard to sustainability at the university, then I would say um, go to the Union of Students. You can speak to one of the officers there. There's a part-time sustainability officer who is there for exactly that reason to kind of promote any ideas um, and to kind of work with other students to get projects up and running. So um, you can get in contact with her to um, to kind of raise anything that you're interested in or any of the other officers that, that work at, at the union. But also there is a sustainable a sustainability society, which is called Fridays for Future. Um, and they kind of look at kind of implementing projects as well. So that's a really good one to get involved in. But there's also other groups. So, for example, there's um, the Hedgehog Friendly Campus group, which is student led and it kind of involves collaborating with lots of different groups, um, including the community, actually. Um, So it kind of depends what your interest area is. But I would say it's kind of it's important to um, have the confidence to take that first step to talk to someone about getting involved even if you're not sure exactly what it is that you want to get involved in um and you might be surprised at what you end up achieving hmm. i know the uh achievements of the hedgehog friendly campus group they've done amazing at the university this year in getting us bronze level uh hedgehog friendly campus accreditation uh but also societies there's lots of ways to get involved there and i know for me when i was a student some this was an interest that I had that there wasn't a society for and you can go to the uni of students and ask them and make your own society if you can find a group of people who are interested so if you listen to this yeah. now in 10 years time potentially or five years time from the release and some of these things don't exist anymore there's nothing saying that you can't create those for yourself um and the initiative hedgehog friendly campus came from student ideas uh, and it has done it across the across the country with different student ideas and so on so yeah don't be afraid of creating things if something doesn't exist and if you if there are things that exist get involved in them yeah so I've got one more question for you before we end the interview today. That's a question that I ask to everyone who comes on this podcast. And that question is, 
what advice do you have for a student who wants to be successful? Okay, I would say get involved with as many extracurricular activities as possible. Seek out opportunities to try new things. Getting experience in a range of areas can really help to boost your confidence. And you might also find something that you really enjoy and you want to get into either as a career or a hobby. So I would definitely recommend looking for volunteering opportunities as well. It doesn't all have to be through the university. It might be within your local community or something like that. But you can learn a lot from joining these different kind of clubs um, and societies and groups uh, and trying lots of different things and getting various different experiences. It can really boost your confidence. And you can also find out what you don't like as well as what you do like. So I think it's really valuable to take advantage of those opportunities as much as possible because it's much easier to do that whilst you're at university potentially than it is like further down the line. I have to agree, by the way. That's probably the biggest piece of advice I could give as well. And I think it's, from my experience as a student, that was what gave me the best, best and most skills development. So, yeah, I 100% agree with that. Get involved as much as you can in as many ways as you can, whilst also making sure that you can manage your time enough to do your degree and do what you need to with that. But also get the chance to build your network and get involved and make impact. Yep, definitely. So thank you very much, Liz, for all your advice today about sustainability. You've certainly inspired me to try to make more sustainable impacts on a smaller uh, level, whilst also trying to influence others in areas to make bigger decisions. Uh, So yeah, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for, for having me. It's been great. Thanks again for Liz for this podcast full of positivity for the future. I personally feel inspired now to use my skills for the good of a sustainable future. So I hope you feel somewhat similar. Here are my key points from this episode. First, anyone can make sustainable impacts. You don't need to have a sustainability related degree. If you don't, then that's great because you can use the skills from your course to help. Even if you know absolutely nothing, you can start learning and a great place to start is by researching the sustainable development goals and by making small changes. The second key point is that Liz identified the key skills that you should develop to start making impact towards a sustainable future. These include problem solving, enterprise, strategic thinking, network, and collaboration. We have episodes on how you can develop the skills of problem solving and enterprise, and you may find these really useful for developing those skills. These can be found on our podcasting site or through the description of the YouTube version of this podcast on the Derby Uni Library YouTube channel. Finally, it is never too late to start to make an impact. Liz recommended starting by taking small actions that will make you more sustainable and build you up over time. One small action that you could take is to get involved in one of the groups at the university. I've added links to the Union of Students Society page where you could have a look at what societies you can get involved in. I've also added links to the Hedgehog Friendly Campus group, who are an amazing group acting currently for sustainability for hedgehogs. And a link to where you can contact the part-time officer for sustainability at the university. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.